Okay, so welcome to today's meeting of uh, our AFM course. In the last meetings, we have discussed uh, instead uh, whenever we started currency rates, that currency rates is the risk that currency rates may go up if you have to make payment or go down if you have to receive payment, the types, translation, transaction, economic risk, the codes, direct code, indirect code. And the techniques deal in home currency, leading, lagging, matching, forward exchange contract, money market hedging. Now, in previous two classes, we have heavily practiced forward exchange contract and money market hedging. Now, forward exchange contract and money market hedging once done, then we move towards the question in which we used to decide which is better, forward exchange contract or money market hedging. We used to solve both forward exchange, relevant row highlight, quote, and then multiple or divide. Payment is buying, receiving is selling. Money market hedging payments go to foreign bank and deposit less amount to buy that from the money changer and uh, borrow the amount from local bank. Whereas in case of receipts, go to foreign bank and borrow, sell it to money changer and deposit. Okay. Now we are going to start our new technique today, and this technique is called netting or matching, and we will be doing two to three questions of that as well. Now, what is netting or matching? I've already taught you theoretically that what is netting or matching. We just need to understand uh, how the questions work. Now, the definition of netting or matching was that it involves offset of receipts and payments. Whenever you have to make payment and you have to receive payment, no need to go into separate transactions, better to offset them. This is called netting or matching. Now, there are two types of netting. The first is called bilateral netting. In bilateral netting, there are only two group companies involved. Only two companies are offsetting their transaction. Whereas the next one is multilateral netting. Multilateral netting is where several group companies are involved. There are several companies which are offsetting transactions. Okay. Bilateral netting, only two group companies are involved. Multilateral netting, several companies are involved. Okay. So this is how it works that uh, in bilateral netting, only two group companies are offsetting their transactions, whereas in multilateral netting, there are several group companies. Now, the important thing you need to know is how to solve a netting question if you get in the exam. Solving a netting question is very easy. It's just a two-step approach. Step one, convert all intercompany balances into one currency that is the parent currency. All intercompany balances are firstly converted into one single currency. All balances. How are balances converted into one currency? Conversion is always via multiplication or via division. There is no other option. All balances are converted into one currency. It will tell you. And if it doesn't state in which currency you should convert, always the parent. And the second step is to make a transaction matrix as follows. The format of transaction matrix is like this. You make columns of owed by, owed by is payable, and you make rows of owed to receivables. Owed by is payable, owed to is receivable. Make columns and rows. Enter the relevant subsidiaries or companies. Record their individual transactions. And that's it. <coughs> this is how I think it's solved. First, Convert all intercompany balances into one single currency, that is the parent currency, and then make a transaction matrix. The transaction matrix is made as follows. Owed by payable columns, or two receivable rows, record transactions of the companies, and that's it. Okay, I will discuss the advantages and disadvantages later, but firstly, I need to teach you how does a netting question get solved in the exam, and what is the meaning of this transaction matrix. Okay, so let's start through this question. I've shared with you a notes folder of uh, risk management. I've shared with you a notes folder of risk management. You need to go to page number seven of that folder. There is a handwritten example. You need to go to page number seven of that risk management folder. There is a handwritten example. <coughs> you need to deal that handwritten example. Okay, I'm starting it. A group of trading companies controlled from USA. A group of trading companies controlled from USA has subsidiaries in UK, South Africa, and France. So there is a group of trading companies which are controlled from USA. The holding is in USA. 
has substituted in UK, South Africa, and France as a 31st December, the intercompany balances were. So as a 31st December, what are the intercompany balances? Kindly note, as a 31st December, what are the intercompany balances? Receivable, which is owed to, and payable, which is owed by. So receivable is UK, payable is South Africa. The balance is 1,200,000 in the currency South African brand. Receivable is UK, payable is France. The balance is 480,000 and the currency is Euro. Okay. The next transaction, it's receivable is France, payable is South Africa, currency is rands, 800,000 South African rands. The receivable is then four transactions South Africa, payable is UK, balance is 740,000 GBP, Great British pounds, and receivable is South Africa, payable is France, the balance is 375,000 euros. Either you say owed by O2 or receivable payable is the same thing. Exchange rates are exchange rates are South African dollar, South African rands per dollar, 6.126. Pound per dollar, 0 0.680, euro per dollar, 5.88. Requirement, calculate net payment between subsidiaries after netting of intercompany balances. You need to find net payment after netting off. So you need to apply netting off technique, okay? So how does netting off technique apply? Let's start, how does netting off technique apply? The first step, convert all balances into one single currency convert all balances into one single currency. This is the step one. Convert all balances into one currency. Okay, what are the balances? The first balance is twelve hundred thousand South African rand. The second balance is 480,000 euro. The third balance is 800,000 South African rand. The fourth balance is GBP 740,000, okay? And the fifth balance is 375,000 euros. Okay. You're asked to find the net payment between subsidiaries after netting of intercompany balances. You need to apply netting. So netting involves two steps. I am at the first step, convert all intercompany balances into one single currency. So there are five balances, 1,200,000 South African rands, 480,000 euros, 800,000 South African rands, 4,000, GBP, and the fifth one, 375,000 euros. I have to convert all intercompany balances into one single currency. And which currency, if the question doesn't tell, always the parent. Where is the parent's currency? So convert all intercompany balances into one currency, that is dollar. Convert all intercompany balances into one currency. If the question mentions fine, else correct. Let's convert 1,200,000 South African rands into dollars. It's either through multiplication or division. See, you need to convert 1,200,000 South African rands into dollars. What is the exchange rates? It's 6.126 South African rand per dollar. The parent, the controlling is in USA. The currency is local, US dollar, it's in denominator in the record. So you will convert to divide. Okay. dollars one nine five eight six second for every thousand euros, I have to convert all balances into one currency dollar. This euros need to be converted into dollars, so either multiplication or division. No other option. 
Let's convert 480,000 euros into dollars. Multiply or divide. The rate is euro per dollar. Again, dollars in denominator. Direct quote, you need to divide. You will get the dollars. Okay, I will work that out later. Again, 800,000 South African rands, the third balance seem to be converted into dollars. Again, multiplication division. There is no other option of conversion. Again, the rates are South African rands per dollar, dollars in denominator, in the record, divide. You will get dollars. Okay. Then GBP 740,000 needs to be converted into dollars. Multiply, divide. Divide because the rates are 0 0.60 GBP per dollar. Dollars in denominator, in direct code, divide. 0 0.660, get dollars. And finally, Euro 375,000. Again, it's Euro per dollar, divide it, in direct code, 5.8, get dollars. Now, it is a possibility in exam question that uh, some currencies are given in indirect code and some are in direct code. Like in this question, every currency was per dollar, per dollar, per dollar. In every way, dollar was in denominator, the parent was in denominator, the indirect code, division, lower buying, higher selling, if two words are given. But it can happen that uh, South African ran per dollar in dollars in denominator and the next currency is dollar per pound. Dollars in numerator, so to convert pounds to dollars, you need it to multiply, okay? So look at the question carefully, what the question is asking here. The first step of netting is that convert all intercompany balances into one single currency. And what is that one single currency? The one single currency is dollar, unless mentioned something else, always the variable. Every transaction needed to be converted into dollars. Multiply or divide, divide. Because it's per dollar, indirect code divide. I converted everything by dividing, so my answers are 480,000 euros divided by 5.88, it's 81632. Okay, then 800,000 South African rands divided by 6.126, it's 130590 dollars. Okay, 740,000 divided by 0 0.680. It's one zero double eight two three five six three. That's the first step. Convert all intercompany balances into one currency. So this is the first step that uh, you converted all intercompany balances into one currency and one currency was uh, always parent unless mentioned. I don't think this step is a problem. You just have to convert all balances into one currency either through multiplication or division depending on code. Second step. make a transaction matrix. Step two. Now listen carefully, how do you make a transaction matrix? How do you make a transaction matrix? Okay. In transaction matrix, you will make a column called board by. is payable okay and you will make rows
of odd two. which is your receivable. You will make columns of owed by, which is your payable, and owed to, which is your receivable. Mention all transactions with companies. Mention all transactions with companies. Look at the first transaction. Payable was South Africa, receivable was UK. So there was UK, South Africa. Mention all companies, all groups, all countries which were making transactions. Okay. So the first transaction, UK and South Africa were involved. So I wrote UK and South Africa. The second transaction, UK and France were involved. I've already written UK, so I need to write France. In the third transaction, France and South Africa were involved. I've already written France and South Africa. In the fourth transaction, South Africa and UK were involved. I've already written South Africa and UK. And in the fifth transaction, South Africa and France were involved. I've already written South Africa and France. So remember to mention all countries. The first transaction, UK and South Africa are involved. I wrote UK and South Africa. Second, UK and France, I wrote UK, already written, and France. The third, France and South Africa, already both are written. Fourth, South Africa and UK, both are written. And the fifth, South Africa and France, both are written. And the same countries of which we have made columns make the rows. UK. Okay, this is how our transaction matrix is made, owed by columns or two receivables, mention all countries in columns and the same in rows. Okay. Fill these boxes. Obviously there is no transaction of receivable and payable between UK and UK it can be. Payable is UK, receivable is UK it can be. No receivable payable between South Africa, South Africa. No receivable payable between France, France. No receivable payable between UK, UK. Nothing between South Africa, South Africa. Nothing between France, France. Fill others. What is the first transaction? The receivable is UK. See, receivable is UK. And the payable is South Africa. Okay, receivable is UK and payable is South Africa. So note this transaction at the intersection of South Africa and UK. Receivable is UK and payable is South Africa. How much is the transaction? 195886. The first one already converted. 195886 right here. Okay, 195886. Move towards the second transaction. Receivable is UK, payable is France. So receivable is UK, select UK. And payable is France. UK and France intersection. The transaction in dollars is 81630. The third transaction. Receivable is France, payable is South Africa. So receivable France here, payable South Africa here. At the intersection of South Africa and France, what is the amount? 130590. Okay. Four transaction. Receivable South Africa, payable UK. Receivable select South Africa, payable select UK. What is the transaction? 1088235 because every transaction is now converted in dollars. And the last transaction, receivable South Africa, payable France. Receivable is South Africa here, payable is France here. What is the amount? 63775. Okay, whatever columns and rows are left empty, leave them. We can't do anything if there are no transactions. So first, you converted all balances into one currency. And second, you need to make a transaction matrix owed by O2. Mention all countries. Mention the transactions at the correct intersection. That's it. Now last step. Total all of these UK South Africa, France, total all of these. So the total of UK is 1088235. Total of South Africa is 195886 plus 130590. It's 326, 476. And total the French transactions. It's 81632 plus 63775. 
okay this is the total of table or owed by right you added all payable balances right so this is the total of owed by or payable not total like this as well like this UK all total like this South Africa all total like this France all total so like this the France all total is one three zero five nine zero okay like this arrow, the total of South Africa is one zero double eight two three five plus six three seven seven five one one five two zero one zero. And like this, the total of UK is one nine five eight eight six plus eight one six three zero two double seven five one eight. Okay, this is the total of all receivable, or you can call it, this is the total of O2, it's the same thing. Okay. Last step which you have to do is, you have got the total of payable, you have got the total of receivable. Deduct the total of receivable or O2 from the total of payable. So total payable of UK was 1088235, total receivable was 277518, deduct us. Okay. Total of payable South Africa was 326476 and the total of South Africa receivable was 1152010. And finally, the total of French payable was 1145407 and the total payable less total receivable as you can see above 130590. You get net receivable or payable. So, one zero double eight two three five minus two double seven five one eight. It's eight one zero seven one seven. Since payable are higher than receivable, it's net payable. Okay. Secondly, three two six four seven six is the South African payable, but one one five. 2010 is the South African receivable, and that is negative 825534. Since receivables were more than payables, it's net receivable, that's why coming negative. And the finally 145407 was the payable, minus 130590 was the receivable. So that is 14817. Since uh, payables were more than receivables, it's not payable. Okay, that's the end of transaction metrics. Just to confirm whether your answer is correct or not, I need you to net them all off. The net off of all this should be zero. C14817 plus 810717 less 825534, that is zero, that is net off. This means, what does this mean? Listen carefully, UK has net payable South Africa is net receivable and France has net payable. No need to do five or six transactions. France has net payable, it should pay. UK has net payable, it should pay. So, UK has net payable, it should pay to this. France has net payable, it should pay to this. And instead of five transactions, you will only deal in two transactions. France will pay, UK will pay, and South Africa will receive what is receivable, and that's the transaction. Okay, 
So this is how netting works. Hope you understood it. So just need to copy this, that convert all of the company balances into one currency, step one, and then make a transaction matrix. Okay, please copy this so that I can give you another question.
Okay, now you have to do one question yourself. And uh, this question is again in the same folder where they send you. Let me just confirm you the page number. The stress management folder. This question is on page number uh, five. Okay, you have to do this question yourself. I'm just explaining a small thing in it. Please carefully listen. It's a work example. P is the parent company of a group that contains three subsidiaries Q based in Europe, R based in USA, and S based in Canada. So P is the parent company. Three subsidiaries Q in Europe, R in USA, and S in Canada. Following cash flows are due in two months' time. Owed by O2 Canadian dollar 3 million, owed by O2 Canadian dollar 5 million, owed by O2 that's receivable, payable, same thing, Canadian dollar 7 million, then 2 million, then US dollar 6 million, then Euro 12 million, then Canadian dollar 5 million. Metric exchange rates in two months are expected to be. Now the rates are presented as follows. Pound one is equals to US dollar 1.6. Okay. Remember, one always means denominator. Pound one is equals to 1.6 US dollars. One is always in denominator. So it should be read as US dollar 1.6 per pound. Okay. The second rate is pound one is equals to euro 1.2. One always comes in. One always comes in denominator. So it should be read as euro 1.2 per pound. Okay. And the last pound one is equals to Canadian dollar 1.5. One always comes in denominator. Should be read as Canadian dollar 1.5 per pound. So that you are easily able to identify the codes. Okay. Remember one always comes in denominator. Okay. So I have to do this thing which I wanted to tell you and I want you to do this question yourself. Calculate it using a tabular format, transaction matrix, the impact of undertaking netting. Okay, do it yourself, we have 10 minutes.
Okay, let's do solution of this question now. We were asked to solve netting. So first convert all intercompany balances into one currency and one current is of P, the parent currency. And it looks like uh, the parent is not Europe. Parent is not USA, parent is not Canada, <coughs> it's pounds. So Canadian dollar, 3 million. Then US dollar, 5 million. US dollar, 4 million. Canadian dollar, 7 million. Canadian dollar, 2 million. US dollar, 6 million. Euro, 12 million. And finally, Canadian dollar, 5 million. All these will be converted into one currency pound since pound is one denominator everything is per pound there is no guarantee everything will be per pound but in this question again everything is per pound denominator indirect code divide so canadian dollar will be converted everywhere by dividing it with 1.5 us dollar will be converted everywhere by dividing it 1.6 and euro will be converted by dividing it 1.2. Okay, let's start. Two million pound. 3.125 million pound. 2.5 million pound. 4.66 million pound. 1.33 million pound. 3.75 million pound. 10 million pound. 3.33 million pound. So all transactions were converted into one currency pound. That is of parent. Make a transaction matrix now. Okay, so find the transaction between companies. The first one is between P and S. So you need to write P. And S. Then PR, so P is already written R. Then QR, Q is all used to be mentioned and R is written. QS already mentioned, RS already mentioned, and RP already mentioned. SQ already mentioned, SP already mentioned. Okay, and the same four things should come here P, S, R, and Q. No transaction between P2P, between S2S, between R2R, between Q2Q. They won't trade with each other. P2P. P can't, uh, I can't pay and receive myself. I can't pay to myself and receive to myself. No transaction between P and P, S and S, R and R, and Q and Q. Now, know the transaction. First transaction owed by is P and owed to is. S, owed by P, O2, S, 2 million pounds, okay? Second, owed by P, O2, R, owed by P, O2, R, how much? 3.125 million. Third transaction, owed by Q, O2, R, Q2, R, 2.5 million. Fourth transaction, owed by Q, O2, S, Q, S, 4.66 million, okay? Fifth transaction, owed by R, O2, S, 
1.33 million sex transaction or by R or 2P. 3.75 million. Second last or by S or 2Q. S and Q, 10 million. And the last or by S or 2P. 3.33 million. Okay. You need to do total horizontally and vertically. That would be it. So total of uh, 3.33 plus 3.75. Total like this, 7.08 million. It's 8 million. Five point six two five million. Ten million. This is the total of all receivables. Okay. Total in this manner also. Two and three point one two five. It's five point one two five million. S is thirteen point three three million. Then it's five point zero eight million, and then it's four point six six plus two point five. 7.16 million, okay? The last step is to deduct P total from P, S total from S, R total from R, and this from S. You will get net receivable or payable. So it's 2.84 million negative. 0.545 million negative. Five point three three million positive. One point nine five five negative. First net them off whether it is becoming zero or not. So 1.955 negative minus 0.545 negative and 2.84 negative. Now them all, it's just a 0 0.01 difference which is immaterial should be ignored, okay? So what does this finally mean? This finally means that the more payables, less payables, more receivables. It has to receive, it has to receive, it has to receive and it has to pay. So it should pay to all of them. And in three transactions, the whole stuff will be over rather than eight transactions, there were eight transactions, it will be settled in three transactions, okay? So now one last question for today's class, that's on page number eight. It's the question name, multi-drop. I want you to read it yourself and do it yourself. You have 10 minutes, okay, please start.
for six, okay?
Okay, so I have uh, just uh, here shown in front of you the answer of uh, this uh, multi-drop uh, question. Okay, you can have a look uh, at this answer and check uh, whether you have uh, done it correctly or not. Okay, actually, since uh, <coughs> The class has already been too long, so I don't want to make it further long because this question discussion is going to take 20 minutes at least because we have part B theory as well. So just I'm requesting you all to have a look at this uh, solution and check if you have done correctly, it's fine. If you have not done correctly, you can rectify. And don't worry, in the next meeting, I will firstly solve this question and then move towards the next questions. Okay, have a nice day. Take care. See you in the next meeting.